All right, so let's talk about the first method that I alluded to in the previous video. This is what is called the method of isoclines. And before we talk about what this actually is, let's just be clear about what this word is, because we, most of us probably haven't heard the word isocline before. So let's break this word apart. We have first the part that is iso, and second we have the cline. Well, we've probably heard iso on its own before, maybe in the word isosceles, for an isosceles triangle. Iso means same, just same, and that is in the same way that when you have an isosceles triangle, you have two sides that are the exact same length. Well, if you're uh, not, if you don't have a wiggly hand like I do. So, iso means same. What does cline mean? Well, we've probably heard different words like incline, or if we were going to be declining, decline, or perhaps we would have that. I don't know. These are this is good. These are good enough examples. Excuse me. Well, what is this talking about? Maybe. Oh, I had one more. Inclination. In. Oh wow, I'm getting a little bit of lag here. Inclination. What do all of these have in common? The cline. And what does the cline mean? Well, it means almost steepness. Different steepness, right? we had this here. An incline literally means going up. You don't want to have an incline more than 20 degrees if you have a truck. So, right? Inclination means you're leaning in that way. You're thinking, hmm, maybe I should do this. Decline means that this inclination is going down. So, cline really means steepness. Steepness. And in the context of math and differential equations, this steepness, what this really means, is the slope. So the method of isoclines can be rewritten as the method of same slopes. Okay, great, so now we have this in English, but what does this mean? Why would we want to have the method of same slopes? Well, all right, let me tell you what this slope field could be. So this slope field, let's just imagine that it is y equals, and it is just going to be x plus y. This is y prime, excuse me, y prime equals x plus y. So this slope at any given point, this dy dx, this y prime, is going to be the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. Well, if we look at this here, that generally makes sense. If we look at quadrant one, where x and one are x and y are both going to be positive, we're seeing generally positive slopes. Quadrant 3, where we're going to have x and y both negative, we're seeing always negative slopes. And in quadrants 2 and 4, where we're going to have a mix, we're generally seeing that we have both negative on the bottom, positive on the top. One important thing here to notice is that this graph is being a little sneaky, and it's giving us different scales on the x and y. As we can see, the y is bunched up, scrunched into half the space, which is to say that its, its scale is slightly smaller. So we'll have to remember that if we're trying to make a line, we'll have to account for the fact that y has a unit of 1 that is slightly shorter than x's 1 unit. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's think about the method of isoclines. What it says is that instead of going through every pair of x, y coordinates that you want to draw and plugging it into this y prime equals x plus y, wouldn't it be great if we could solve this equation, x plus y, y prime, for a certain constant, maybe c. Because if we could solve this for a constant c, that would give us a curve for which all of the derivatives, all of the slopes on that curve, are equal to this constant c. So whatever that curve may look like, maybe the curve would look like this or something, or maybe it's actually uh, a function that might be explicitly represented. Whatever the curve may look like, we'll have some value of c equal to something, and we'll be able to say at every point on this curve 
the method of isoclines tells us we're going to be able to draw the same slope. And this is what the method of isoclines is all about. It says, hey, if you can calculate this, then you can find a curve where you just draw the same slope everywhere, and that's much easier than going through all the points on the curve and calculating the slope individually. Here, maybe the curve is zero, or the slope is zero, or slightly positive, as I seem to be drawing it tilted up. And you can draw them the same everywhere. So let's try applying the method of isoclines to our direction field here for y prime equals x plus y. Let's try setting it equal to c. Well, let's try setting it equal to a few different values first. So let's try x plus y equals 0. Well, this is for this, all of the slopes of 0. This looks like maybe it is going to mean if we move y to the other side, that y, sorry, move x to the other side, y equals 0 minus x, or just minus x. All right, so let's try graphing this, this line. And the only thing we have to remember is, again, that the x scale is larger than the y scale. The y scale is compressed to show more. So if we're going to draw y equals negative x, we're going to have to keep that in mind. So let's find the point negative 1, comma 1. It's right about here. And the point 0, 0. And now all we have to do is connect these two lines. Let's see how well I can connect them. Ooh, not very well. All right. Let's just continue this on. It's not perfect, but it is all right. And connect this on this way. All right, this is our line y equals negative x. It might look like it is a slope of negative 1 half, but again, that's just because the y scale is compressed. All right, well, with this in hand, what the method of isoclines is telling us is that at all points on this line, y prime should equal 0, should have a 0 slope. Well, if we actually go in and look at it, it looks mainly correct. We have a zero slope here, so we draw a line segment of zero slope. Zero slope here, zero slope here, zero slope here, zero slope here. Of course, my line drawing skills are not top notch, so if we're going down here, we'll notice I should have been drawing it a little bit steeper. You see I'm above the origin here. So really, our line should have been a little bit more like this, going down this way. But for our purposes, we're a about correct, and we can continue drawing our zero slopes. Now, what if we had instead chosen c equals 1? All of the values where c equals 1, where the slope is 1. Well, if we had done that, we would have had that x plus y equals 1, or in other words, that y equals 1 minus x. All right, well, if we look at this, this is the same line, but shifted up by 1. So let's draw it maybe in slightly different color. I don't know. So we're going to have this here, and we're going to have the exact same slope. So I'm going to try to find negative 1 and 2 is going to be right about here. So we're going to have to draw a line between these different points. And we're going to go like this. And we're going to continue it. And we're going to continue it this way. All right, this is looking slightly better as a line. And now if we go in and draw our different slopes at slope of 1, we're noticing, yeah, all of, the, all of the little line segments on this line have a slope of about 1. And I'll just do one more example to make sure it's very solid. Let's try the method of isoclines with c equals negative 1, so all of the points where the slope is negative 1. Well, this should make quite a bit of sense at this point. We're just going to have the exact same thing, except that we're going to have x plus y equals 1, or, well, negative 1, excuse me, or y equals negative x minus 1. Again, same line, except this time, we're going to be drawing it shifted down 1. So let's draw this here. We have this line connecting through here and approximately through there, extending upwards. All right, and we have this line, and according to our equation, all of the slopes on this line should have a slope of negative 1, all the line segments, excuse me. So if we draw those, it seems like, yeah, these all have slope of about negative 1. And again, all these slopes are a little bit wacky because of the scale that we're drawing them on. But approximately, all of the slopes, all of the line segments that this purple line is cutting through 
have a slope equal to the purple line segment itself, because obviously the purple line segment has a slope of negative 1. And according to our equation, our method of isoclines, all of the line segments should have a slope of negative 1. So hopefully this makes sense. You could continue this on forever and ever. In general, the method of isoclines is useful when the isoclines that you get, the curves you get, are not overly complicated. If it saves time to calculate the isoclines and then to just write down all of the, uh, to draw them and then draw on all of the different uh, little sh short line segments that go on them, then that's great and the me method of isoclines is good. But if this slope field is so complicated that doing the method of isoclines and even solving y for a c, maybe it's implicit somehow, like this shape, this blob, then the method of isoclines might not be the best choice. But in general, for a simpler slope field like this, y prime equals x plus y, the method of isoclines is super useful because you can see also how this is generalizing. You can just continue with your line segments going up to get new slopes. With that, we're going to talk about the phase line in the next video, and I'll see you then.